Hello and welcome to coverage of GP Atlanta. Maria Bartholdi here in the booth with Marshall Sutcliffe, Kaladesh, Seal Deck, Andrew Brown there on the left side of your screen, Team East West Bowl, and Michael Bonde on the right side. Both currently sitting at 3 0 here in round four. Big smiles from both of our players early here, but those will go away in a minute when they get into battle mode. <laughs> battle mode. Yeah, it's all fun and games until that first land hits the battlefield. Looks like we've got the names, got the names mixed up. Yeah, but we'll work on getting those fixed once we can. That is Andrew Brown. There we go yep. on the left side. Taking a look at the deck list here, Maria, and I'm seeing that uh, Michael has going what I'm assuming is going to be an aggressive deck. Oh, really? Yeah, he's playing uh, red white. Andrew Brown plays a forest and attunes with some ether. Yeah, he, he's playing a three-color deck, though. It's primarily mm -hmm. green-white. And he's splashing. Wait, did he just get a mountain there? Yeah. Well, that's kind of awkward because on his deck list, I'm not showing a mountain. I'm showing a swamp. Mm. Let me see what he's actually splashing for here. Michael Bond going to play a veteran motorist to get things started. All right. I Scry two. What I'm going to assume here is that he's actually splashing a swamp, but that he's green red and not green white. No, that's not true either. What is going on here? All right. I'm going to I'm going to consult this All deck right, list in a moment, out. but then we'll. we'll Meanwhile, Michael Bond watch is Michael just smash, smash here for face six. for six. <laughs> Brazen scourge. Oh, what a card. So Andrew's got to put up some defense here. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> it's going to get pretty ugly. There he is, a planes in his hand. Taps three for some welding sparks. Going to take down the Brazen Scourge. All right, I think I have figured it out. So he's green white. Oof, crunch. And he's splashing. for black. Okay. I don't know why there's a mountain on the battlefield right now for him, though. Okay. I, I, it's not listed on his list, and he's, according to this, not playing any red cards. So Michael played a fleet wheel cruiser last turn, 5-3 for 4, trample and haste, and it's uh, pretty nice that it crews itself, essentially, when it first enters the battlefield, and later on has a crew cost of 2. Followed up by a chief of the foundry, which is going to give artifacts, other artifacts he controls, plus 1, plus 1. And Andrew's just going to scoop him up. First game goes to Michael, starting off this match. That was a really that, aggressive that start. That wasn't really close, was it? No, it was not. Aggressive start <laughs> and aggressive finish <laughs> from My Michael. Goodness. Boom, boom, boom. Fleet Rule Cruiser, another one of those vehicles that you have to be on the just just have on your radar that it could come out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's I a mean, rare. It, I mean, these rares are just tough to play around. You know, sometimes they just have it. And you just yeah. get smashed. But even then, I don't know what Andrew could have done in that with that start. It's I mean, Michael was attacking for six on turn three. <laughs> like pretty good. Just get you dead. I'm excited to see a red white vehicles deck here in the future match area, which of course, when you play sealed, you you know you play with what you got, so you don't ne necessarily have as much synergy as you do in a draft deck. But I think that's just a really fun archetype. And it seems that he's uh, playing to it as much as he can. Veteran motorist and fleet wheel cruiser. Veteran motorist, just a really interesting card on its face as well. As a 3-1 for uh, red and a white. And allows you to scry. Scry to when it enters the battlefield. Which is not something that red and white is used to getting all the time. Yeah, and you said it, you know, sometimes you don't get to build the perfect deck, but sometimes you do end up with, you know, a red-white vehicles deck, yeah. and you just do it. We were talking about Team East-West Bowl before, which Andrew Brown is a member of. Kind of made up of players who are really, really on the rise, I hmm. would say. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and they've made a huge impact on the Pro Tour over the course of the last two to three Pro Tours. They're... They went from being relatively unknown to being kind of a powerhouse. JC Tao winning that PT really put them yep. 
you know, put a big stamp on on their team for sure. They had a great deck for oh, that. Oh, I remember that deck. Mm -hmm. Eldrazi with playing the 2 1 <laughs> flyer. Sky Spawner. Sky Spawner. Yeah. <laughs> they had Eldrazi, Sky oh. Spawner, and Modern. <laughs> they I busted loved that. it. <laughs> I love seeing draft staples end up in uh, modern decks or constructed decks. I just love that. As someone who started as a limited player. Yeah. What do you mean, started? Right? Well, are I'm, you no longer a limited player? I am a limited okay. player, but I've, I've since played my first constructed, my first oh. uh, um, constructed GP, GP Minneapolis. Well, that's good. Yes, standard. Uh, it was standard. What did you end up playing? I played mono white humans. Okay. And I day two'd, so it felt Ooh, great. Ooh, congrats. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, no. All right, we're going to look in Speaking here. Speaking of standard, <laughs> there's a smuggler's, <laughs> smuggler's copter. <laughs> The looter scooter we, on its way. We will be seeing a lot of those, I believe, in, uh, uh, in Hawaii. Yes. Green-white over here from Ryan. Um, aerial responder. It doesn't match up so well against the smuggler's copter, but it is a fantastic card nonetheless. Yeah, and nothing really does. <laughs> you know, that's the part of the reason why that card's so good. Here comes Visionary Augmenter 2-1 uh, with Fabricate 2. Decided to put the counters on Visionary Augmenter, a.k.a. Ripley from Aliens. <laughs> That's just what that card's called. Let's, be, like let's be honest. Yeah, you're right. Prophetic Prism from Tiago draws a card. And a Key to the City. That's an interesting card. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to play Key to the City yet. It's a rare. I haven't taken it. I've passed it a couple of times. I haven't lost to it yet. I'm curious to see what it does here. You can tap it to make one of your creatures unblockable until end of turn, and then when it untaps, you can pay two mana. Excuse me, and you have to discard a card. Yes. Um, at the, in that first yep. inter interaction. And then when it untaps, you can pay two mana, and you get to draw a card. So it has this sort of delayed loot thing yep. going on. And then it combines it strangely with getting your creatures into the red zone. So Ryan here offering the trade for Smuggler's Copter. Tiago is going to draw and discard. Thanks to the block, and it looks like he's just going to trade it off. You never want to trade off your really sweet rare, but it seems fine. All right, we're going to check back in uh, with our first match, Andrew Brown versus Michael Bonde. We have a Reckless Fireweaver on the table for Michael versus a 2-2 only from Andrew. Aviary Mechanic again. Twins. I think he's just playing them as two yeah. twos this game. There's a lot of cool things you can do with aviary mechanics, but one of them is just play a two two. <laughs> Eddie Trail Hawk for Michael. Be interesting to see if how much use he can make of that Hawk's energy ability mm -hmm. later in the game. Mm -hmm. Andrew's gonna crack in with his two twos. Michael's like, I'll block. Propeller Pioneer for Andrew, choosing to put the counter on the Pioneer herself. Good old snapping Drake. Yep. Ooh. Oh, Furious Reprisal. What a beating. Game. <laughs> Maybe not, but still, that was pretty bad for uh, Andrew. That card has proven to be fantastic for me every Agreed. time I've cast it. Yeah, it's really good. It's just a two for one generally. <laughs> yeah, and even if it's not, you know, you'll kill something yeah. small and do two to them, which is close enough. Wild Wanderer, wanderer for Andrew is going to go find a basic. And there's that mystery mountain. <laughs> Still don't, Still I think don't it, it must just be a, a, he must have written it incorrectly, because it does show that he's got a swamp and no mountains in his list. But I think that he might have just missed which side. Did you tell me what the mountain is for? Oh, good question. I still don't know the answer to that. Let me look. Built to smash? Demolish? No. No, I mean, he he doesn't have any red cards marked. None of his gold cards. Sky Swirl Harrier for Michael. Just a 3, 4, for 5 flyer. But that card has proven to me to be very, very solid. Yeah. I just I don't really understand what the mountains for. So the weird thing is that looking at his list in black, so he has one swamp marked, and in black he is splashing a card. Huh. Multiform wonder. We've seen a lot of that card today. 
already. Three, three for five, get three energy. You can pay an energy to give it Flying Vigilance or Lifelink. And plus two, minus two, or minus two, plus two. In comes a Sky Swirl Harrier for three. Tapping five for a Wayward Giant. Four, five with Menace. I'm wondering if this is a different Andrew Brown's list I have in my hands, because there's also some cards that he doesn't have <laughs> on his deck list at all that he has on the battlefield. It, maybe there's just multiple Andrew Browns. <laughs> Poor Marshall is sitting here trying I, to figure this out. I am just out. scratching my head, because the, the, the thing is that the, the base colors are actually correct. <laughs> like, the deck that I've been handed, or the list that I've been handed, does have green-white with a splash. Yeah. But, like, it doesn't have any Wild Wanderers on it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and it, but it does have a tune with the ether, which we saw. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that sorted. The perfect I'll, I'll let recipe that little, for confusion. That little confusion just rest <laughs> for now. Because I've just been scratching my head at this thing forever. <laughs> Multiform Wonder. Coming into the red zone. Always a difficult card to block. <laughs> just because of its many abilities. So it appears Andrew spent an energy on the Multiform Wonder. Card's good. We're going to see a lot of those yep. today for the sealed portion, and it's a likely first pick in the I draft as well. Prophetic Prism. Question, Marshall, are you playing Prophetic Prism even if you're not splashing? It depends. Like, you could see that Michael just got a little bit of value out of it from his Reckless Fireweaver there, playing yeah. Andrew Brown from 18 to 17. So, maybe. Okay. I, I would say probably not, generally. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I need to get something out of it. I don't need a lot. A couple of doomed operatives would probably do it for me. Sure. If I had two of those Reckless Fireweavers, I'd probably consider it. It doesn't need to be much, but just, you know, two mana draw a card. I, I do want to get something out of that. So the Wayward Giant getting in there with the Eddie Trail Hawk. The Giant has flying, notably, thanks to the Hawk. One of the better uses of the Hawk. Ooh, Harnessed Lightning from Andrew Brown. And Spending it, all of it. All of his energy. Yeah, he had two saved up, and he gets three from the Harnessed Lightning, and that's enough to kill the Giant. Yep. That's nice. I mean, he, you know, like, he needed a little help, but he paid two mana and instant speed to kill a five drop there. Yep. That. That you don't get that trade. very often yeah. in limited, so that's really nice. Harness Lightning is a fantastic card. It's just so flexible, right? You get, you get, you know, no matter what, three damage, and pot potentially up to infinite more. So it appears there are, in fact, two Andrew Browns in the tournament. Yes. And that's what happened. And I feel much better. <laughs> They are both playing green-white. They are both splashing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> they both have a lot of the green-white cards that you would expect to see. But uh, What are the chances? This, this is not the one. Oh, here we see Blossoming Defense, plus two, plus two, and Hexproof until end of turn. Okay. That's a handy little card. That's yeah, a nice use for that. Save that for your modern deck. Would you first pick that? <laughs> No, Marshall, I would not. I think you would, though, wouldn't you? Interesting. <laughs> Brazen Scourge is a play for Michael. That was one of my favorite raps to your show, by the way. Tell LSB. He's in the chat right now. <laughs> Great just, job, Luis. Made his day. <laughs> Wild Wanderer getting in there. Double block from Michael. Yeah, I like this block from Michael. He He's offering a, to trade one for one, either of these two creatures, for the much bigger 3-2. And it uh, looks like he's gotten away with it, too. So the Reckless Fire Weaver, it's done its job, and now it's going to trade off for a four drop. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. I have Andrew Brown's actual Hooray! list now, and it feels so good. <laughs> Glenn Sleeve Artisan taking the counter from Andrew Brown. So Andrew is splashing for the Harness Lightning that we already saw. He's yep. also got two copies of Welding Sparks. Okay. That's fair. 
There you can see Glenn Sleeve Artisan on your screen, a 2-2 two -two with Fabricate, one for three. I just saw a really good card in Andrew's deck. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're gonna, I'll, I'll wait and see if it, if it pops up here. <gasps> Suspense! Yeah, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to say it. But he's got some... His, this deck looks great. He's Andrew got two attuned with the Aether, actually, in this deck. Oh. And that means that he's decided to run uh, 16 lands rather than the 17 with eight of them being forests. So those are basically a land as long as you have a forest. That's how to sure. look at that. Sure. So he's kind of in between. Yeah, that's always interesting when you when you can feel safe enough to take out a land. Yeah, and definitely with two. Some people do with one, but it just depends on how many forests you have. Michael has his own copy of Glint Sleeve Artisan, and he's going to make a servo with his. Just a fantastic, flexible card. Three, three for three. What, oh, a, what great. a great rate. Otherwise, a two, two, and a one, one. Eddie Trailhawk, pinging in for one. That's something that I personally want to work on more in my uh, sealed deck building skills, is how to more confidently build a three-color pool if I think that I need to. Multiform Wonder and Glint Sleeve Artisan are the attacks. Brazen Scourge blocking the Multiform Wonder. Andrew out of energy at this point. He's also out of action. Yeah. <laughs> Holding some lands in hand, it looks like. Michael pretty happily traded off for the Multiform Wonder there. Absolutely. I, you know, that Brazen Scourge wasn't looking amazing anymore. Multiform Wonder, just a house. I did make a misplay with it once <laughs> where I had uh, <laughs> the Black Gear Hulk and mm -hmm. I targeted both copies of the Multiform Wonder that my opponent had. My opponent just kills both of them in response. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got nothing. I suppose it was I'm, removal spell I mean, I guess away. I guess killed them. But <laughs> 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 Glenn Sleeve Artisan getting in. Here's that welding sparks that he's splashing for. Oof, impeccable timing from Michael. Impeccable indeed. All right, so this board has gotten pretty significantly cleared up here. Yeah, absolutely. There's only a 2-2 two -two and a 1-2 one -two and a 1-1. One -one. But we see in hand just two cards in hand there for Andrew while Michael's got five. Plays the land and drops to four. Passes a turn. Didn't attack with his hawk. At only six life, he'd rather preserve the option of making a double block here. If he attacks, it just opens the door for Andrew to attack with his 2-2. Two -two. Iron League Steed is the play for Andrew Brown. 2-2 uh, two -two with haste and fabricate one. Yeah, and there you go. There comes. So he gets to attack. trade off his aviary mechanic for an Eddie Trailhawk, which he's happy to do, and leave himself with a 3-3 three -three that's now lethal. Facing down just a 1-1 from Bondi. Fragmentize from Bondi, Bzz. taking care of that Iron League Steed. Another card which was maybe or maybe not play, you know, main deckable. I think it's definitely main deckable. Well, we have a Bomat Courier. This could get interesting. This card, this little guy is pretty interesting. It's a 1-1 one, one for one. It is haste. And when it attacks, you exile the top card of your library face down. And at any time, you can sacrifice, pay a red mana and sacrifice the Bomat Courier to put all the cards exiled with he's, it into your hand. He's probably going to do that here. I think yeah. he's got three lands in his hand. It looks like he's going to be patient. He can still wait, but the way is completely clear for him. Yeah, he so would love to get back on the board. Yeah. yeah, but I, I mean, I think if he's going to do it this way, he probably attack again. He knows he can get one more attack in. Even if there's a blocker, you can just do it before blocks or, you know, before the creature dies. Right. And yeah, he's just going to kind of run it up with the Bowman yeah. Courier. Yeah, there's another land. Another land. He may... He's considering playing the land first. If he plays the land, he gets one fewer card. He's got plenty. Yeah, all right. He just needs to rumble here. Welding uh, Sparks. Before attacks, the Welding Sparks is going to hit it. So Andrew doesn't want to see that happen with an additional card. So Michael's going to get to draw two here. And since the servo. attacks didn't happen, the servo gets to get in. Thrive, thriving Ibex. Mm -hmm. Two energy. Now up to three. 
-hmm. And uh, everybody scries, party scry, off of the eager construct. Yeah. yeah. We've already seen thriving Ibex flying through the air earlier. <laughs> we sure did. <laughs> and not just on the art of Sky Swirl Harrier. <laughs> oh, fumigate! There, that's the one I was talking about. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> just clear out the board. So all that work from the Bomac Courier. Oh, oh man, There's that's got to be up. literally the best draw in Michael Bondi's deck right there. Oh, Master Trinketeer, 3-2 three, for 3, gives servos and thopters plus 1, plus 1. You can pay for to make a servo, especially on an empty board. What Curious a follow-up. Curious to see if he attacks with the Trinketeer here. He may leave it back, fearing impeccable timing. He may also just decide, yep, yeah, he's going to leave it back. That makes some sense here. He has the ability to make two servos per turn now. And with they're that. two twos. And they're two twos each. So he's going to take over this game very quickly just with the Trinketeer. Look at that card go. Here come the servos. Andrew Brown just takes it. It looks like he has a Cultivator of Blades in his hand, mm -hmm. which that, is... That is a card he has in his deck. That will help. Not a lot, though. I I still think this Master Trinketeer is just going to dominate this board now. Revoke privileges. Yeah. Uh, can't attack, block, or crew vehicles, but that's just fine. Yeah, it still has the privilege of jamming out two twos in the form of two of them a turn. <laughs> You're going to take infinite. There, Michael Bond it takes a match. Two games to zero over Andrew Brown. Kind of cool. You know, the first one was super, super aggressive from Bondi. Yep. And then the second one was much different. You know, he generated a little bit of value off of the Bomac Courier. Andrew stemmed that bleeding pretty quickly, though. It was only two extra cards, then got fumigated. And then, boom, he was able to find that Trinketeer and completely take over. That was a fantastic play after that after that fumigate. We're going to take a look here at Tiago Saparito. Yeah, Marie, can you break down this board state? You're the play-by-play, -play, <laughs> so go ahead and just let us know what's going on with this. All right. Uh, Welcome give me, to the booth. <laughs> uh, give me about 10 years, so I'll get back to you. Oh, my God. Look what an this. insane board state. And this is something that I wondered if it would happen in this format because we see so many high, uh, high toughness and power creatures, and there's vehicles that are just beefy running around. Oh, he's going to draw some cards. Just a couple, <laughs> but that's pretty good. <laughs> that's great. The Armorcraft Judge getting him two cards. Now, the, the thing to keep in mind, though, when you see a board state like this, yeah. right, is there's usually two ways that these board states get broken up. Uh, one of them is somebody finds a threat that can attack right. and just keeps sending it into the red zone, whether it's a flyer, an unblockable creature, something that gives unblockable, or something that's just simply so big that it would trade off for two, three, maybe four uh, cards on the other side of the battlefield. The other way that it gets broken up is that somebody builds out a board that's big enough to just start attacking with a ton of creatures. Now, that usually only happens when the players are at low life total. And as you can see, they're both at very high life total here. So those are the two ways that these things generally go. And what we have here is Ryan has now completely tapped out, it looks like. No, I'm sorry. I spoke a little bit too soon. He does have one creature that can tap for mana down there. But still, he's mostly tapped out, so Tiago gets to have kind of free reign to block how he sees fit. And I think that, you know, sending vehicles into the red zone is going to become pretty commonplace if they can trade off for one or two creatures like you see here. Yeah. Also sitting on a, Ryan, sitting on a cool 10 energy over there that. in the corner. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> Drowning in energy. It doesn't look like he has a whole lot to do with it, though. No. That's a situation when you, like... <laughs> <laughs> the beast maker, as it were. Tiago's going to throw a triple block now. And, you know, the only cards that he really needs to worry about here, I think, are built to last and blossoming defense. And uh, he's going to keep those in mind, but just be fine to trade off a couple of creatures there. Tiago also has an, an aerial responder on his side of the battlefield. So mm. always a possibility of getting some life back. Two copies of Prophetic Prism and a key to the city, and he's going to activate it. 
So that is one of those type of cards that you can use to really start to power through here, both taking advantage of the loot ability to get lands out of there. He's got plenty of those and to get in for damage where he sees fit. So this is actually a really cool timing in the game that we came into. He did the city looks great here, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. That, that Arbor Back Stomper has six power. Now, now it's going to smash. Nature's way. Yeah, while well, the shields are down. So Arbor Back Stomper, Marshall, the new Thrag Tusk? Uh, close enough. <laughs> no. It's good, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. I really like the card. I take it over most stuff in the set, but... Would you take it over an aerial responder? Uh, at this point, I think I would, actually, yeah. Really? I think I would. I've really enjoyed playing green. I think green is, is one of the deepest and best colors, and I really, really like Arbor Deck Stomper. Though, to be fair, I do think the responder is a better, a better card in general. But I, I've really preferred green a lot. I think green's great. Stomper also tends to dodge a lot of the removal that you see at common and the responder tends to die to a lot of the removal. Yep. And we talked about impeccable timing mm -hmm. and welding sparks being two of the ones that you're going to see a lot. Yeah, with only three toughness. That one that one point of toughness can make all the difference. Indeed. And here's welding sparks speak speaking of Welding Sparks on the Eager Construct. And this is a pretty big swing here for Tiago. This turn went really, really well for him. Look at how much he has cleared up the board yeah, state the, compared the, to when we came in. This Look is absurd. That. that was a savage blowout by anybody's yes. estimation there. He gets to keep the Stomper. Also, the Stomper even gets in for some trample. It's just ridiculous. And all in the back of a Welding Sparks and a Nature's Way? That's right. Yeah. Hey, when you play two removal spells in one turn and you got the kind of board that Tiago has there, you can do a lot of work, and we saw it there. Wisp Weaver Angel is going to blink draw the Armorcraft Judge draw card. Renegade Freighter. Yeah, the Pain Train doesn't look amazing here, though it is still decent, right? It'll, yeah. it'll still maybe trade for something or block something on the ground instead of one of the smaller creatures having to block. Because Ryan's board is still pretty impressive when you look at it. It is. It's not too shabby. That 4-4 four, four flyer helps things out significantly mm -hmm. as well. 3-2 three, flyer, 3-3 three, three on the ground. So our, our Arborback Stomper gets unblockable thanks to Key of the City. Tiago discarding an island. And this is what you mentioned before, too, when you do get a clogged board state. You know, if you have something that can get unblockable, just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, and especially, th I mean, really this key to the city is dominating this board in many ways because while Ryan's a little bit behind on board, you know, he's just going to keep taking hits, and if he starts killing the creatures that are attacking, it's still not going to work out great for him. Right. <laughs> Wildest dreams from Tiago. Oh, my <gasps> God. Are you serious? Yes. For seven. So we wow. got back three cards. Oh, my God. Tiago is just crushing now. That is insane. <laughs> he got back Welding Sparks, and I, I'm not sure what the other two were. Man, it, it looks like Ryan's deck is better set up for the early game, but Tiago has the late game really in spades here. I mean, that key to the city doing serious work. Remember, he's been discarding cards to yeah. that and building up his mana, and now he just gets to rebuy a bunch of them. Ryan plays uh, just a 6-6 six, six for 6. We talked about him during a deck building. Watching Corey Burkhart. All right, here uh, the paint train's going to get in, crewed up. And the propeller pioneer. I'm curious to see what Ryan has. This could be desperation time here. I mean, Ryan's certainly going to recognize that he is not winning this late game no matter no, what. No, no. And it may be better to just start attacking and give himself, maybe he has some outs in his deck that can do something, but Double block. this is going to be very difficult for him to climb his way out of because if Tiago gets to untap, he has three spells in hand to start the turn no matter what. He can even pay two mana and draw another card if he'd like. 
wouldn't be surprised to see him actually skip it this turn just because yeah. he has so much to do in his hand. It kind of depends on how he lined it up. Yeah, he's not yeah, even going to bother. Draw it. When you've already got three amazing cards. Yeah, he'd rather have the mana freed up. I think I see a Gear Seeker Serpent in his hand as well, which uh, is pretty cheap on this board. Speaking of unblockable. Yeah. Welding Sparks comes back. Can deal approximately a million thanks to those prophetic prisms, filigree familiar in Q of the City. Yeah, so it's doing seven. Blossoming defense from Ryan saves so the angel. He did have the blossoming yeah. defense. That's kind of interesting. And there it is, Gear Seeker Serpent for three. Gross. <laughs> Affinity for artifacts in limited. Discards to give the Arborback Stomper unblockable. And that's Confiscation Coup that he discarded. He just so discarded Confiscation? Yep. <laughs> I mean, when I you want to deal five, you want to deal... <laughs> I mean, six in this case at his counter. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, know, you want to deal six? Bastion Mastodon there for Ryan. Yeah, he's he just a scoop. <laughs> surveys the scene. It doesn't look good. <laughs> Tiago takes it down two games to none. Congrats to him. What a fantastic match. That was gross. And that does it for uh, round four here at GP Atlanta. Well, we might have a little more action here. Oh. They're just finishing up, but we may have one other match in the future. We'll take we'll take we'll, a look and find out. We'll see if we can get that on camera for you. It's possible. Okay. So uh, we've seen all our matches this round. Uh, we'll be back very shortly with round five and round four here at GP Atlanta. Support your local game store by going to Friday Night Magic. Have fun hanging out with friends, cracking new magic packs, and playing with your favorite Kaladesh cards. Featuring devious gremlins, ingenious dwarves, and face-smashing gear hulks. Up your game with Ultra Pro Magic the Gathering accessories. Find the best magic art on card sleeves, deck boxes, play mats, and more. Visit ultrapro.com to learn more and find a retailer near you. Welcome back. I'm Tim Willoughby, joined by Hall of Famer Frank Carsten, and things are rocking and rolling here at GP Atlanta, getting through the rounds at a reasonable pace here. But we have a little bit more magic to be able to show you, so let's head back down to the feature match area for one of our time-shifted matches. So here we can see on the left of our screen we've got Tim Wu up against uh, Max McVeighty. Um, looking at these decks, we, we're going to kind of zip through some of, some of the matches because we want to take you to kind of the key segments that we've got going on. Uh, but it sounds like there's a couple of gremlins that have managed to get into the works, so we're going to just jump back here for a second. Um, so far, we, I mean, I don't know if you got a chance to see much of that match. Like